We continue with the second part of this course about community detection in networks. So in this part, we will see several methods that will allow us to detect communities in networks. So community detection methods are methods that will allow us to partition the networks into communities without an a priori classification of the node. They are adapted to different types of networks, that whether directed or undirected networks, whether weighted or non-weighted networks, also to tree-like networks that are acyclic, acyclic networks, and they stem from different guiding ideas. Some of them, they, they, they aim at optimizing the modularity. Some of them stem from the diffusion processes, from the idea of diffusion processes over networks. Some of them they stem from spectral methods, others from information compression, and some are inspired by some natural or physical processes. We start with the first method, that is the Newman's method. So its goal is to find a clustering by maximizing the modularity, the modularity of this clustering using a greedy algorithm. So the, the idea is to start with an atomistic clustering, that is a clustering um, in which each node is the only uh, member of its own cluster. And then we iteratively merge uh, the two clusters of which merge improves best the modularity. So how does it work? In the steps in detail, are we have to start with the clustering C0 in which each node is in its own cluster. Then from then the, the iteration to go from step n to step n plus 1 is to consider the clustering Cn if the modularity of Cn can be increased by merging two of the clusters of Cn, then we choose the two clusters of which merge will increase the most the modularity Q. Otherwise, we choose the two clusters of which merge will decrease the least the modularity Q. Then we merge these two clusters. And then, at some point, we will reach, um, we will reach a, cluster, a clustering in which there will be only one cluster containing all nodes. And then the result of this algorithm is to will be uh, n different clusterings obtained from the different steps, and each of the each of the clustering will have a modularity q1 to qn. And then since we we saw that the modularity is a measure of the quality of a clustering, we will choose the clustering with the highest modularity, and this this will be the clustering that the Newman the Newman method gives. Another community detection method is the Louvain algorithm. So its goal is also to find a clustering by maximizing the modularity using, this time, a local greedy algorithm. The idea is close to Newman algorithms, but with local optimization and a supplementary step that will help to improve the results. The differences with Newman is that here, instead of merging clusters, we actually change nodes from a cluster to another, and the, the, the change of cluster for a node can only happen um, from the node's cluster to the cluster of a node that is a neighbor of the chosen, chosen node. So the, the change can only be local. And then once the modularity cannot be increased, increased anymore, then here we create a new weighted graph. This is the supplementary step in this, in this new weighted graph the nodes will be actually the previously found clusters, so we fuse all the clusters within, uh, we fuse all the nodes within a cluster into one node, new node, and then the links will be the sum of the weights of the links that are between each clusters. So we do this step again, 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 and again, and then at some at some step at some step we will end up with an atomistic clustering that is so again it's a it's a clustering having only one node as a member that has the optimal modularity so and then the the original nodes form the original nodes forming each nodes in each node in the final network will belong to the same cluster here an example 
For example, here we have this graph. And then we do the first step. The first step gives us this clustering. Then this is transformed into this graph with four nodes, since we have four clusters, with the sum of the with the sum of the the, the edges having the sum of the edges between the between the clusters here. And then this again is clustered, and then we end up with a final result with two nodes that that are there's there each 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 node this is has its own cluster and then so we have here the the green cluster that is here and then the purple cluster that is here this third community detection method also aims at maximizing the modularity queue but this time by using a probabilistic algorithm why use a probabilistic algorithm so we the modularity function actually has a lot a lot of low local maxima meaning that these maxima are actually local uh, by this we mean that we cannot just in one step change the clustering and uh, gain modularity but these in terms of in terms of all the possible uh, clusterings we can get these actually maxima are actually low compared to some other um, um, clusterings and in since since these these maxima are actually local uh, greedy algorithms that only that only can change uh, step by step get trapped in these local maxima so to remedy to this problem we add randomness to the optimization algorithm that allows to jump out of these local maxima so how does it work so we start with a random clustering, and then randomly we select a node and a cluster. Then we consider the changing this node to the selected cluster. And then if the change increases the modularity, here it's a good situation, then we, we change the membership of the node to the selected cluster. But if the change decreases modularity, then we still can possibly change the membership, but with some, probab some probability, this probability here is actually decreases decreases with the change of modularity here remember that the modularity decreases so this change is negative so actually this this probability goes exponentially um, to zero if the change in modularity is big negatively big so so by this the idea is that if the change in modularity is not um, is not that is not that the, this loss of modularity is not that big then we can allow for some changes and then we stop when the clustering stabilizes the here's an illustration of the idea so here are the different clusterings and um, clusterings that are next to each other mean that they, they are a kind of uh, neighbor clusterings so this so by this we mean that we can change from this clustering to this clustering just in one step just basically by changing a node from a clustering to another so if we had a greedy algorithm the greedy algorithm can only um, also go step by step so it would start here for example and then it would go here since here increases modularity and then it would go here but since this is the local maxima Actually, the only the only possibility for the greedy algorithm is either to come back here or to go here. So it doesn't do it, and it gets stuck here. But this is, for example, this is not the the local the the maxima the best local maxima we can reach, which is this one, for example, in this case. In in the simulated annealing, we start here, and then we go here. The same thing, same here. But here, since we can go lower with some probability, it's it's likely that we end up in this lower state in a first time and then again we will go back to this higher state and end up with a better with a better uh, local maxima so this is the, the interest of the sim simulated annealing method that usually leads to better results compared to greedy greedy approaches another category of community detections on networks uses uh, diffusion processes 
So the goal here is to find clusters using a diffusion process on the network. The idea is to choose a process that diffuses from node to node through links. And since clusters are characterized by high density between uh, nodes, Another category of community detection mode. Another category of community detection methods uses diffusion processes on networks. So the goal is to find clusters using a diffusion process on the network. How is this done? The idea is to choose a process that diffuses from node to node through links. Since clusters are nodes are a group of nodes characterized by a high density of links, then we, we, we expect the processes to diffuse first among the densely connected nodes, and this would reveal the clusters. So many models exist that implement this idea. And the most simple one is the random walk method. How does it work? Then we choose randomly a node, we put a random walker on the chosen node, at each step the walker chooses to go to a neighboring node randomly. We let it walk for a small number of steps, we note all the visited nodes, and then we repeat the process several times by choosing randomly other initial nodes where we put the walker. And then the walker is expected to visit mostly nodes that are densely connected to, selected, to the selected initial nodes, and then the clusters are revealed by the nodes visited together by the walker. Another class of community detection methods are based on spectrum decompositions of the connections matrix of the network. Here the goal is to find clusters using a spectral decomposition of the network connections matrix matrices. For example, the adjacency matrix is the simplest one. The idea is that nodes sharing the same connections should appear as geometrically close when projected on the leading eigenvectors of connection matrices. Why? We should think here of the adjacency matrix as a data matrix with, with nodes in rows. We know here that each row represents the connection of the, nodes with the, uh, of the nodes with the other nodes in the network. So if nodes are part of a cluster, they should have similar connection profiles since they should be connected to the same nodes, such as here we see that these connection profiles here are relatively similar compared to these ones that are relatively similar within their group. So when we project them on, an, on, the, on the leading eigenvectors of, the, of, of this matrix A, they should appear as geometrically clustered, like what we, what we would observe in, in PCA. Of course, the list of community detection methods presented until now is not comprehensive. There are many other methods that aim at detecting communities in networks, and we list here uh, some of them with an overview of how they work. So the first one is the, over the InfoMap method, and it's based on information theory, and the goal here is to compress the information about linkage structure by grouping nodes into groups that minimize the linkage structure information loss, and then compressing, compressing the information using densely connected groups of nodes minimizes the information loss, yielding our clusters. The other method is the spin glass, the spin glass algorithm. It's a method that is inspired from the physics of spin dynamics, and it leads to the optimization of another form of modularity that is expressed here, here we note that we have um, a free parameter gamma that multiplies the, 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 penali the penalization of the absence of links within clusters and so with higher gamma we penalize more uh, clusters that do not have internal links. And then the maximization of this modularity form of modularity H here is usually carried out using simulated annealing. 
And then the last class of models is the our models based on synchronization. And here we put oscillators on nodes and we let them run with different frequencies and phases. And then nodes with, uh, will synchronize with each other based on the, uh, the distance they have on the network. And then densely connected nodes are expected to synchronize together and then clusters are obtained by looking at nodes running at the same frequency.